Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this fixed beam using consistent deformation method. In this beam there are two loads. One point load 9 kN. It is acting at a distance of 2 meter from the point A. Then we have uniformly distributed load 4 kN per meter. It is acting for the whole span. Length of the beam is 6 meter. Now let us find the degree of static indeterminacy. In this beam, the number of unknown reactions and moments are 4. They are the moments Ma and Mb and the reactions Ra and Rb. The available equilibrium equations are 2. The degree of static indeterminacy is equal to 4 minus 2. We will get 2. To make this beam statically determinate, from these four, we have to remove any two of them. Let us remove MB and RB. You can see that I have removed MB and RB from the point B. So the point B becomes a free end. Previously it was a fixed beam, but now it is a cantilever beam. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. The coordinate diagram is only for the reference. In this analysis, there are two coordinates. They are the vertical reaction Rb and the moment Mb. We are keeping them as the coordinates because these are the ones we have removed. Let us keep Rb as the first coordinate and the moment Mb as the second coordinate. Let us assume that Mb is acting in the clockwise direction. Finally, if we get negative value, then we can change the direction. To find Rb and Mb, we have to use these two equations. We know that in the given fixed beam, in the point B, there is no settlement or rotation. So, delta 1 and delta 2 are 0. Finally, we will get these. To find these six displacements, we are going to use unit load method. In the unit load method, first we have to find the moment M using the given loads. For finding the moment M, we have to make sections. In this beam, there are two different parts. They are BC and CA. So we have to make two sections, one in BC and one in CA. You can see that I have made two sections, one in BC and one in CA. I have made both of the sections at the distance of X from the point B. For both of the sections in BC and CA, the origin is B. The limit for the section in BC is 0 to 4 and for CA it is 4 to 6. Now let us find the moment M in the section in BC. We are going to find the moments from the point B. In this case we are moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anti-clockwise will be positive. Up to the section we have only the uniformly distributed load 4 kN per meter. It is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. We know that when the UDL comes, we have to multiply with the distance and distance by 2. So x into x by 2. We can eliminate 2. Here it will be 2. x into x, we will get x square. So for m in BC, we have got minus 2x square. Now let us find the moment in the section in CA. Up to the section, we have the uniformly distributed load and the point load. The UDL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the UDL, we have to multiply with the distance and distance by 2. The point load is also acting in the clockwise direction so it is also negative. For this load, we have to take this distance. This distance is x minus 4. We can simplify this. When we simplify, we will get this. Let us apply that. Now we are going to find the moment M1. For that we have to remove all of the loads from the beam and apply unit load in the first coordinate. Our first coordinate is Rb. 
So in the direction of RB, we have to apply unit to load. You can see that I have removed all of the loads and applied unit to load in the point B. RB was acting upwards. So we have to apply unit to load in the upward direction. Now let us find the movement in BC. Up to the section, we have only the unit to load. It is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is x. 1 into x, we will get x. Now let us find the movement in CA. Up to the section, we have only the unit to load. It is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is x. 1 into x, we will get x. Now we are going to find the movement M2. For that we have to apply unit movement in the second coordinate. Our second coordinate is MB. So in the direction of MB we have to apply unit movement. You can see that in the clockwise direction I have applied unit movement. Now let us find the movement M2 in BC. Up to the section we have only the unit movement. It is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. Now let us find the movement M2 in CA. Here also up to the section we have only the unit movement. It is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. Now we are going to find delta 1L. The formula is integration of M, M1 upon EA dx. Since there are two sections, we have to split the formula into two parts. For BC, the limit is 0 to 4 and for CA, the limit is 4 to 6. In the integrations, let us apply the values of M and M1. Now, we can take a calculator and do these two integrations. If you do not know how to use calculator for the integrations, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and got these two values. When we add these two, we will get minus 744 upon EI. Now let us find delta 2L. The formula is integration of M, M2 upon EI dx. In the integrations, let us apply the values of M and M2. After the calculation, we are getting 162 upon EI. Now let us find delta 11. The formula is integration of m1 square upon ea dx. Let us apply the values of m1. Finally, we are getting this. Now let us find delta 12 and delta 21. Both of them are having the same formula. Integration of m1 m2 upon ea dx. We know that x into minus 1, we will get minus x. After the calculation, we are getting minus 18 upon ea. Now let us find delta 2 2. The formula is integration of m2 square upon ea dx. In the integrations, let us apply the values of m2. Finally, for delta 2 2, we are getting 6 upon ea. We have found all of the displacements. In these two equations, let us apply them. Negative into negative, we will get positive. Now we can take a calculator and solve these two equations. If you do not know how to solve two equations in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and got the values of P1 and P2. Our first coordinate is RB. So P1 is RB. For RB, we have got 14.333 kN. Our second coordinate is MB. So P2 is MB. For MB, we have got 16 kN meter. We have found the movement MB and the vertical reaction RB. Now let us apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0 and to find RA. RA and RB are acting upwards. So both of them are positive. Both of these loads are acting downwards. So both of them are negative. For the UDL, we have to multiply with the distance. Finally, for RA, we are getting 18.667 kN. Now, let us take moment about A and find MA. 
we are going to find the movement from the point B. In this case, we have to follow left hand side rule. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. MB is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. RB is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 6. The UDL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the UDL, we have to multiply with the distance and a distance by 2. The point load is also acting in the clockwise direction so that it is also negative and the distance is 2. Let us assume that MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive. After the calculation for MA, we will get a positive value. That means our assumption is correct. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction. Now we are going to draw the shear force diagram. I am going to find the shear force values from the point A and towards the point B. In this case, I have to follow right hand side rule. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Here you can see the calculations. Here you can see the shear force diagram. Now we are going to draw the bending moment diagram. The bending moment diagram can be drawn in two ways. The easiest method is superposition method. In this method, first we have to convert the fixed beam as a simply supported beam. You can see that I have converted the fixed beam into a simply supported beam. Now we have to draw the bending moment diagram for this simply supported beam. First, let us find the reaction Ra. For that, I am going to take a moment about to B. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. Ra is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 6. So 6 Ra. The load 9 kN is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 4. The UDL 4 is acting in the anticlockwise direction so it is also negative. For the UDL we have to multiply with the distance and distance by 2. Finally for RA we are getting 18 kN. Now let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0 and find RB. Now let us find the bending moment in the point C from the point A. RA is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 2. The uniformly distributor load is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the UDL we have to multiply with the distance and distance by 2. So for the bending moment at C, we will get 28 kN meter. Now we can draw the bending moment diagram. We have uniformly distributed load for the full span. So the diagram will be in the parabolic shape. This diagram is called the free moment diagram. And this diagram is positive. Now let us draw the end moment diagram. For MA we have got 20 and for MB we have got 16. We know that MA was acting in the anticlockwise direction and MB was acting in the clockwise direction. We have to see the direction of the arrows. Both of the arrows indicates upwards. So the diagram will be coming above this line. Since 20 is bigger than 16, we have to make this line little higher. Then we can combine both of the diagrams so that we will get the bending moment diagram. Where both of the diagrams are combined, we should not mark anything. We just keep the space empty. Wherever they are acting alone, we have to mark with the signs.